Hello and welcome back to another edition of Weather or Not. Today I'm your host, Kyle Eck, joined by forecaster of the day, Connor Freithoff. Now, Connor, we have some good news. I heard we have some more warmth in the forecast. Can you tell me more about that? Well, you're absolutely right. High pressure system will be making its way into the region. It's going to be bringing up those temperatures up to the 70s for the weekend. Wow, it's very interesting. And I also heard you had some very interesting and intriguing nature in the news stories. Absolutely. I'll be talking about Ugandan coffee production, how they're changing the type of tree to avoid drought, as well as a Spanish heat wave that is currently gripping the Iberian Peninsula. How about you? Sure. So one of my nature in the news stories is going to be covering the re recent winter leg chill as we flip the calendar from April to May and some of the wintry precipitation we saw in Western PA, as well as the normal water temperatures across the state throughout the month of May and what maybe people should be doing to protect themselves from potential hypothermia if they find themselves in too cold of water. It's very interesting and very informative. In addition, David Guerrero will be sending us off. As you know, this is our, our final show as we approach graduation. So a very bittersweet ending, but it's also very much new horizon to look forward to. Sure, of course. And with that, let's make our way into our final nature of the news for the semester. <music> The beginning of May has been especially harsh in Spain. Continued drought along with oppressive heat has furiously gripped the country. A warm and dry air mass from North Africa along with high pressure is to blame for a summer-like heat wave. Spain typically is one of Europe's warmest places, sitting at a lower latitude and receiving warm ocean air from the Gulf Stream. Records were set on Thursday, April 28th as Spain recorded its hottest mainland April temperature, 102 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 Celsius, in the southern city of Cordoba. Nearby, Portugal, Algeria, and Morocco also have experienced extended periods of oppressive heat thanks to the ongoing pattern. As crop fields and reservoirs dry out throughout the countryside, authorities are bracing for more heat-related disasters, including water shortages and localized wildfires. As the weather warms through May, it may seem tempting to make an outing on your local rivers or Lake Erie. From tubing with the flow of the current kayaking, or swimming, the options are seemingly endless when it comes to outdoor pastimes during the warm season. However, do take precaution before getting into the water. While air temperatures have been increasing over the past three or four months, water temperatures increase on a delayed time scale. Great Lakes water temperatures normally hit a yearly minimum around the start of March and only slowly increase through the month of May. With normal water temperatures across Pennsylvania in May hovering around the 50 degree range, hypothermia can set in as little as one hour. Even during the hottest times of the year, water temperatures normally don't go above 80 degrees. This means that you can still become hypothermic if exposed to water temperatures in the 70s from extended periods of time. If you'll be venturing out on Lake Erie or rivers across the state later this spring, perhaps reconsider wading into the water for too long. Coffee production has consistently been under threat due to climate change. However, growers in Uganda may have found a variety of bean resistant to the changing times. The two most common coffee beans produced for consumption are Arabica and Robusta, and they're facing numerous threats including heat, disease, and drought. Therefore, growers have resorted to a lesser used bean, Liberica excelsa. The variety has proven itself against the ever sweltering Ugandan heat. The Liberica trees help eliminate a frequent problem with growing the Robusta trees, a lack of water. Drought can result in heavy losses for coffee growers and can drive prices up higher as well. Farmers claim that switching their groves from mostly Robusta to mostly Liberica trees has prevented them from losing their coffee farms. Not only does the switch help Ugandan farmers stay financially stable, but it could help stabilize the global coffee market. Despite the breakthrough, however, the Uganda Coffee Development Authority expects output to be lower this year, much in part due to prolonged drought. As the calendar flipped to May, Mother Nature wasn't too eager to spread the warmth across Pennsylvania. In fact, a trace of snow fell in parts of the Laurel Highlands by May 2nd. In addition, temperatures were held 20 to 25 degrees below average for multiple days. In Seven Springs, more than one inch of snow fell by dawn on May 2nd. With this late season wintry precipitation going on, you may find yourself asking, 
When does winter finally take its last gasp across the Commonwealth? Everywhere across Pennsylvania should have already seen their last measurable snowfall of the season. However, some places have seen snow accumulate in late May. After a very warm start to spring and just in time for everything to bloom, Mother Nature has decided to temporarily resume winter. A welcome change to the weather as it decided to remember what month it was in. As we get into the weekend, a high pressure system is going to be settling down here in the Appalachians on the border of the Virginias. That's going to be bringing up some much warmer, drier air to our region, but not before a couple of rain showers in the northeast of Pennsylvania, also affecting parts of New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New Jersey on, on Friday. So we could have just a few scattered showers here and there, not too much in terms of accumulation, but could be a bit of a nuisance if you have any plans that evening north of the border of Pennsylvania into New York, parts of Canada, is still going to be fairly chilly, especially around the Great Lakes. However, down here, just a few in here, just a few clouds here, Pennsylvania and Ohio, as conditions are going to remain relatively mild as we enter the weekend. Now, Saturday, this high pressure system repositions itself pretty much up here on the border, New York and Pennsylvania, just dipping into the southern tier of New York. Conditions are much warmer south of the Mason-Dixon line as much of the Northeast is going to be experiencing pleasant conditions with just a few sun and clouds here and there, pretty much just trading sky cover throughout the day. Now, however, if you're down here in West Virginia, Virginia, parts of Kentucky, you do have the chance of some scattered showers. There's another West weather system will be making its way through the deep south. Now, on Sunday, high pressure again repositioned itself, pretty much settling around the Washington, D.C. metro area. What does that mean for us? It means temperatures will be shooting up into the 70s. Here's some warm conditions, mainly around Pennsylvania and New York. Sunny skies throughout much of the Rust Belt, much of the Great Lakes. But again, it's down here in West Virginia and Kentucky experiencing some rain showers. So unfortunate for them, experiencing some gloomy weather. However, for Pennsylvania, it's going to be much more smooth sailing into the weekend as we start to see more May Lake conditions for our region. Friday, we do have, Friday temperature doesn't get up as high as we might like it. 61 degrees, still very mild as a few clouds will be making their way through the region. Friday night, we have a chance of a drizzle and temperatures can be dipping back down below 40. I know that seems a bit much, but here in May, it's been unpredictable so far. Going up to 39 degrees, just a few drizzles here and there, especially if you're in the north or eastern parts of Pennsylvania. Saturday, we have a big rebound in temperature back up to 67 as we have starting to really experience the May-like weather. Temperature returning to average. This again, sun and cloud trading sky cover. Saturday night, the clouds do return, pretty much dominate the evening. Temperature will return back down to 43, so we keep that chill around. Sunday, an abundant sunshine, a beautiful day, 72 degrees, high pressure repositioning itself and bringing us some very kind conditions for the region. Now stay tuned, Dave Guerrero has a feature on a final send-off for Kyle and myself. Stay tuned. As we reach the last episode of the semester, we bid farewell to two remarkable individuals who have graced our show with their talent and presence. Their time with us has been nothing short of extraordinary as their performances has captivated us. As they embark on their new journeys, we express our deepest gratitude for their contributions and wish them every success in their future endeavors. And up first, we have Kyle Eck. Now, Kyle, we thank you for your time and dedication on this show. And these must be exciting times for you as you graduate this May. How does it feel? Yeah, of course, I'm very ecstatic to transition from being a college student, now becoming a professional in the workforce. Um, I'm very excited to say that recently I was hired for a job out in the Midwest. I'll be making a big move later on next June, or this upcoming June. I'll be working at WGEM-TV in Quincy, Illinois as the newest weekend meteorologist. Well, those are some exciting news. And do you feel like your time here at Weather or Not has prepared you for your upcoming role? Of course. So those of you at home, you've been able to see me grow as a broadcaster and meteorologist over the past two semesters. I worked alongside last semester's mentors, Dana and Carol. And this semester, myself along with Connor Friedhoff, uh, we were very fortunate enough to be able to lead you and Dennis Kuloff in becoming 
a better forecaster and broadcaster in meteorology. Well, I have to personally thank you for your leadership. You made me and Dennis's transition very smooth. And what has been your fondest memory so far and whether or not? Sure, so my fondest memory has been Sometimes when we would be in front of the wall creating our forecast, sometimes we would mess up a little bit. Um, and it was always fun to look back on the times where we would just like make fun of ourselves, but we would always get back on the train and end up perfecting the forecast for each of you to watch at home. Well, thank you very much, Kyle. And we know your future is bright and we wish you the best. And last but not least, we have Connor Friedoff. And like Kyle, you will be graduating this May. How does it feel? Uh, it, it's very surreal to think, you know, this time has gone by so fast. I feel like I was saying the same thing when I graduated high school, you know, where did the time go? Uh, just with, like the ups and downs, all the work and all the memories and, you know, just all the interest changes. Like I didn't start doing broadcast until midway through my college career. So it's, it's just been surreal and I'm struggling to wrap my head around it still. <laughs> and you mentioned memories and what has been your most fondest memory so far, whether or not? I think it was much earlier on, like in the fall, one of the first shows, like the second or third show, uh, where I was really starting to get into a groove of things with pretty much whatever I was doing here, um, whether it be, you know, on the wall doing the forecast, presenting Nature in the News, or, or even just, you know, editing or making a feature, just being able to get into a, a rhythm, a routine, and to fully understand what I was doing and not feel as much nerves or anxiety, and just realizing, hey, I think I can do this pretty well and pretty naturally. And as you and I both know, whether or not has been a huge time commitment for both of us, do you believe your time here has been worth it? Uh, I do, mainly because, you know, you get much more out as opposed to what you put in. You know, you can put this in a reel. You can, you know, explain to employers what you were doing. In addition, you're getting better at what you do. You're getting better either, you know, on camera or behind the scenes. There's so many different skills you can learn from the show. And I'd encourage anyone who's interested, you know, of course, inquire about it. Uh, this has been just a huge help, not only for my career, but for my skill set. And, you know, I'm going to be using these skills for a long time in my career. I couldn't agree more. And with that, what are your plans after graduation? Well, on, on April 4th, I signed a contract with WENY News up in Elmira, New York. And I will be starting up there on June 1st as a weekend and morning meteorologist. Well, I'm really excited for you. And like I told Kyle, your future is bright. And we wish you the best in your future endeavors. Thank you very much, David. A much more pleasant weekend than last. You can see it here in the temperatures as we go through the weekend. Temperatures increasing and cloud cover decreasing. All coming to a head on Sunday. Where we're cracking the 70 mark for the first time. It will be a very pleasant day. High and dry, as they say. As we look at the extended forecast, we get off to a great start on Monday. Just a few clouds here and there as we hit up to possibly 75 for some parts of the state. But we'll run into a bit of a roadblock on Tuesday. Some rain showers part of our next weather system. That continues into Wednesday as a possibility of a thunder shower is prevalent throughout much of the state. And that's going to continue on to Thursday as those temperatures remain below average. We do have some few clouds here and there. However, on Friday, just going to return back up to the 70s. A few sun and clouds here and there for the region, making for an overall pleasant end to next week. Thank you so much for your extended forecast, Connor. I'm glad we're finally going to start feeling like May in the Commonwealth. And with that, let's make our way into our final Weather Whiz Quiz question of the semester. This week's Weather Whiz Quiz question is, on average, how warm are the waters in Lake Erie during May? Is it A, 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, B, 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, C, 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, or is it D, 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, if you answered B, 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, you are correct. It's very intriguing to me, Connor, how the water temperatures are well below that than the air temperatures. You know, being an inland lake, it's going to be a bit colder, especially, you know, it being a freshwater body as well. Yeah, of course. And with that, again, this is our final show of the school year here. And we do appreciate you tuning in with us each step of the way. And we send our best wishes to David and Dennis as they lead the next group of Weather or Not students in the fall.